Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da Habit of Allah continuing on in our study of Shar al-Sunnah by Imam al-Muzni rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasi'a We reach a portion of the treaties where the Imam was talking about the nushur wal hisab the gathering and the reckoning, the accounting on the Day of Judgment that all of us will have to experience and so that we need to prepare ourselves in this life for the next. And as we mentioned prior to this, one of the narrations of the Salaf, that they said that this life is Dar al-Amal. This life is the time for deeds. And the hereafter is the Dar al jaza It's the time for reaping what you sowed in this dunya. And so this is a continuation, in fact, of the last portion of the treaties where the imam was talking about death and the hereafter and uh, al-barzakh and this is also that life uh, which is approaching yom al-qiyamah the marharat the stages in which we go through our lives and the various other life the life in al-barzakh and this is something which was uh, is a part of the Ittiqad of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, and you'll find this in the books of Aqidah. You'll find this in the classical books of Aqidah that the Salaf wrote. They wrote about Yom al Qiyamah, and that this is the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. This is what we believe. This is what is affirmed in the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this is what the Salaf believed. So you found that Ahl Bid'ah also, in some of these Masail, they deviated from what was uh, the ittaqad of Ahl Sunnah and began to deny the punishment of the grave and aspects of Al Barzakh and differ over these things uh, after Bayna had come to them, after clarity had come to them. But then philosophy and other ideologies that were foreign to Islam began to distort their beliefs and leave its stamp on the, the ittaqad and the hearts of the. Uh, those people who went astray. Imam Muzani, he said, <coughs> he said, وَبَادَ بَلَا مَنْشُورُونَ وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِلَى رَبِّهِمْ مَحْشُورُونَ وَلَدَا الْعَرْضِ عَلَيْهِ مُحَاسِبُونَ بِحَدْرَةِ الْمُوَازِينِ وَالنَّشْرِ صُحْفِ الْدَوَاوِينَ أَحْسَاهُ اللَّهُ وَنَسُوهُ فِي يَوْمِ فِي يَوْمٍ كَانَ مِقْدَارُهُ خَمْسِينَ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ لَوْ كَانَ غَيْرَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ الْحَاكِمِ بَيْنَ خَلْقِهِ لَكِنَّهُ لَكِنَّهُ اللَّهُ يَلِيَ الْحُكْمَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِعَدْلِهِ بِمِكْدَارِ الْقَائِلِهِ قَائِلَاتِ فِي دُنْيَا وَهُوَ أَسْرَعُ الْمُحَاسِبِينَ كَمَا بَدَأُوا لَهُمْ مِنْ شَقَاوَةٍ وَسَعَادَةٍ يَوْمَئِذٍ يُعَدُونَ فَرِيكٌ فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَفَرِيكٌ فِي سَعِيرٍ uh, the Imam uh, Muzni, Rahmatullah Ali, Rahmatul Wasiya, Imam Ismail ibn Yahya al Muzni, he said regarding the resurrection and the re and the reckoning and the recompense, Rahmatul Ali, Rahmatul Wasiya, he said, and afterwards, meaning after their death, they become decomposed and widespread. And on the day of judgment, they will be gathered together in front of their Lord and his presence, and they will be exposed to him during their reckoning. In the presence of the scales and the unfolding scrolls of records, Allah will count up the deeds and the people will have forgotten their deeds. This will occur on a day whose length would be 50,000 years if anyone other than Allah were the judge between his creation. However, Allah will deliver the judgment between them with justice in a length of time known in the worldly life. And he is the fastest of reckoners. Just as he began them from the misfortune and, ha and happiness, 
so shall they be so shall they return on that day a group in paradise and a group in the fire <clears throat> so here imam al muzni rahmatullahi rahmatin wasiya is giving us the belief of ahlus sunnati wal jamaa regarding the resurrection and there are so many ayat in the quran and so many ahadith of the message of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam which talk about yawm al qiyamah and that will be resurrected that that's a part of our iman that's a part of our faith and the prophet alayhi salatu wasallam said in the hadith of jibril radiyallahu ta'ala an oh sallallahu alayhi wasallam in which he was asked about the pillars the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was asked about the pillars of iman the prophet alayhi salatu wasallam responded by saying in tumin billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawm al akhir wa tumin bi qadri khayri wa shar he said that the pillars of iman it is to believe is tumin billahi is to believe in allah and his angels and his books and his prophets and in the day of judgment and the divine destiny the good and the evil of it the qadr So all of those are those are the six pillars of iman wajib ala kulli muslim every muslim must know and believe in that in the in those six pillars just as every muslim needs to know and believe the the pillars of islam had the ilm al-dhururi had the ilm al-wajib this is knowledge which we must have as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we must have this knowledge this is from the muqaddimat this is from the the basic knowledge that every muslim should know and have knowledge of and so from that knowledge and part of our iman is to believe in yawmul qiyamah in the day of judgment the day will be resurrected and called to account for what we did in this life allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in kitab al karim yawm yaqumu an-nas li rabbil alamin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in kitab al karim this is the, the day in which people will stand you know they'll be resurrected before their lord yawm al qiyamah yaqumu an-nas li rabbil alamin yawm yaqumu an-nas li rabbil alamin this is the day in which people will stand before their lord and let us know that that there is an appointed time in which only allah azza wa jalla knows that we will be held to account before him tabarak wa ta'ala we will stand before him for, and all of the things every aspect of khair we did will be known to, will be known and every aspect of shar will be known and there are so much that takes place uh which are mentioned in the books of aqidah and mentioned uh, first and foremost they come from the book in the sunnah of the message of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because that's the only way that uh those are the sources of the religion where we would uh get these these concepts and that we know about iman that we know the ayat ayat shar'iyah the ayat shar'iyah the signs uh of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the divine uh, sharia based ones they can only come from revelation ayat shar'iyah they only come from revelation they only come from the quran and the authentic sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's the only way we know it's not common sense that you know knowledge of the unseen knowledge of the unseen is not coming from philosophy it's not coming from our opinions it's not coming from our logic it's coming from wahi it's coming from revelation that's how that's why these books are uh, a part of why they are uh, were written is to show that these these are the creed of ahlus sunnah and they need to be codified and and memorized and practiced and understood in order to prevent from people's logic and distortions and negations if we were allow it to the people and we left everyone to their logic they would come up with all kind of different creeds and belief systems and this is what's happening anyway today why because those primarily either it's coming from ahl bid'ah from their various forms of innovation or the desires of the people and their whims from the people of ignorance and from kufr and disbelief for other systems 
Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. When we look at many of our brothers and sisters around the world, a lot of their beliefs are contrary to Islam. And the growing popularity of many people and their false ideologies which contradict Islam is due to their whims and their desires and they're taking alien ideologies and systems and trying to incorporate it under the guise of Islam. And more often than not, when it comes to the average Muslims, it's just pure ignorance. They don't know the book. They don't know the sunnah. And they just it's just from their whims. Well, I feel that this would be more just. I feel the Sharia should not be like this. I feel that, uh, you know, that, you know, God created in such and such way. I feel that this, I feel that that. It's all their feelings. It's all their emotions. It's all their whims. And it's all their logic, which has no bearing in determining creed and itikad. Our creed, our belief, and our itikad is coming from wahi. It's coming from nusus. Nusus meaning what? Meaning text. Meaning from the book and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the book of Allah azza wa jal, his divine speech. That's why we believe and we affirm it. We make taslim. That's how the salaf, salaf al-sali were. Ridwan Allahi alayhim. Taslim lin nusus. They just, in their hearts, they just, boom, they accepted it. Oh, had the itikad? This is what we believe. O oh, Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's like this. This is how the Sahaba were. They didn't question, debate the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about why he, they, they asked about what they didn't know, or what they needed further clarity on, or what had a new Sharia based meaning compared to their linguistic understanding. That's it. But they made Taslim. And this is how the Tabi'een were. With Tabi'a Tabi'een. And the Salaf al -Saleh. But unfortunately, many of the people, the common people and other and scholars that had went astray or had been influenced by foreign ideologies, that they went astray, they began to question that wahi. They began to question how to understand that wahi, to take new forms, new methodologies of interpretation. And from the usul of that is taqdeem, Taqdeem al Taqdeem al al aql al anakal. It is taking preference to one's logic over the text. Allah Azza wa Jal also mentions fi kitabi al kareem in regards to affirming this day, Yom al Qiyama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that will be held to account on this day, that this is the day of rec reckoning, the day of judgment, the day of al-haq. Uh, 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 this is the haq. Al-deya al-haq, atum al-haq. Al-waqi'ah. All these various names for this day, the day of judgment, the day of reality, the day of re recompense, the day of reckoning. قال سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب الكريم فمن ثقلت موازينه فأولئك هم المفلحون. Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions وقال أو ثم قال ومن خفت موازينه فأولئك الذين خسروا أنفسهم أنفسهم في جهنم خالدين أو خالدون. Allah subhanahu wa taala says and this is about our deeds being weighed. This is also what? Part of what will take place on Yom Al-Qiyamah. The, uh, the Moazin, the scales, our deeds will be weighed on this day. And judge, will be weighed and judged to see, did you have good deeds? Did you have bad deeds? How will your good deeds compare to your bad deeds? What good deeds are going to be taken away from the bad deeds that you did? How did you oppress this one? How did you curse this one? How did you attack the honor of this one? What did you steal and take as the hawk of this one? And those deeds will be given to those people you oppressed. Wa So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so whoever, whosoever scale is heavy, thakalat, uh, then those are the muflihun. Those are the ones who are successful. So if your scale of good deeds is heavy in Yom Al-Qiyamah, you'll be of the Muflihun bi-idnillah ta'ala. 
ومن خفت موازينه and who so ever has uh, light scales <clears throat> meaning light scales of good deeds they have very few good deeds they didn't do much of good of anything or because they might have did a lot of good but unfortunately all their bad consume their good and the rights of others consume their good that they infringed on the rights of others they oppressed the rights of others so then their good deeds were taken from so this also can be a reason why a person's uh, scale is light their scale of good deeds and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them fa'ulaika ladina khasiru and fusuhum fi jahannam khalidu those are the ones who have they've oppressed themselves they destroyed themselves they only have themselves to be to be to to blame may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and guide us and help us all ameen ya rabbil alamin fa'ulaika alladhina khasiru anfusuhum they destroyed themselves it's their fault fi jahannam khalidun in the hellfire forever so this is the recompense for the hypocrites and the disbelievers as far as being in jahannam khalidun forever but those who have light scales but they were still from ahli iman then from the itikad and the aqidah of ahli sunnati wal jamaah is that they will <clears throat> they're on their tahta al shiatillah they're under the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala insha yaghfir lahum insha yu'adhibuhum if he chooses he will punish them if he chooses he will pardon them this is the affair of ahli iman some of the things that will take place according to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam some of the sifat some of the characteristics of yawm al qiyamah for example the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in the hadith of Ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma he narrated that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said on the day of resurrection Allah will grasp the whole planet by his left hand and all the heavens in his right and then he will say I am the king where are the tyrants where are the monarchs this is in Bukhari and Muslim. This is an authentic hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam letting us know. It makes uh, ithbat of sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sifat that thatia that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a right and a left hand, but we don't know the cave. Ahlus Sunnah doesn't go into the cave as we talked about when we talked about the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know how. In a manner that suits his majesty but we do know because in this authentic hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said on the day of resurrection Allah will, Allah will grasp the whole planet earth by his left hand so we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grasp the planet the earth by his left hand tabarak wa ta'ala but we don't know how and we don't make a mithal we don't make an example we don't know the kayfiyah but we believe it because the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used that language we can't deny that we can't negate that that's the aqidah of ahlus sunnah wal jamaah and the heavens in his right and then he will say i am the king where are the tyrants subhanallah this is a, a lesson for ahli iman because the other people people don't pay attention the disbelievers the hypocrites and those who are oppressive tyrants who oppress themselves and oppress others with their sins they need to pay heed to this so uh the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that Allah will say I'm the king where are the tyrants where are the monarchs where are these leaders where are these kings now because they wanted to be puffed up in the dunya they wanted the respect they wanted people to bow to them they wanted people not to 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 basically to be be obedient to them in everything even in ma'siyatillah some of them where are they now meaning in this day the day of judgment it will come to them and that's the shahid in another hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this is the hadith of sahlib bin sa'ad radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrated i heard the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam say 
The people will be gathered on the day of resurrection on reddish white land, like a pure loaf of bread made of pure flour. That land will have no landmarks for anyone. This is in Bukhari. In another hadith, the Prophet wasallam said, every slave, uh, the Prophet, uh, the hadith of Jabir radiallahu ta'ala narrated, I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam saying, every slave will be resurrected on what belief he died upon. This is a powerful hadith, an indictment that we have to make sure that we're on Islam, that we're on Sunnah, that we are actualizing and understanding this itikad that we're, we're studying now, and that we're spreading that, and that we're defending that. That's what we need to defend, the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah. Because you'll be resurrected on the Yom al Qiyamah according to the, the lisan of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, according to the statement of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you'll be resurrected, Yom al Qiyamah, according to what you died upon. What did you believe? Did you believe the philosophers? Do you believe these new contemporary Muslim beliefs that it's okay to have these Muslim groups? Uh, was the, the Muslim girl tweeter and uh, Twitter account and these other uh, false uh, ideologies and, and foreign ideologies, these sec secular uh, uh, beliefs which are distorting the beliefs of Islam, negating the beliefs of Islam, going totally against the beliefs of Islam, legitimizing foreign ideologies, legitimizing kufr, legitimizing shirk, legitimizing homosexuality, legitimizing men and men marrying defending that the right to that defending nakedness the right for the muslim woman to wear hijab or not wear hijab all of this secular bid'ah all of this uh and those those things which are bid'ah kufriya bid'ah mukaffara or bid'ah ghayr mukaffara all of it a person will be held to account for what they believe and what they propagate and what they promote it wa'iyadan billah wa'iyadan billah min dhalika in another hadith, the Prophet وسلم, said in this hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if Allah sends punishment upon a nation, then it befalls upon the whole population indiscriminately, and then they will be res resurrected and judged according to their deeds. This lets us know, you'll be a, you're re the shahid of this hadith, the point of this hadith is that you'll be resurrected, yawm al qiyamah, in accordance with your deeds. So in accordance... Look at this, subhanAllah. Both of these hadith, one shows us that in accordance with your uh, belief, يُبْعَثُ كُلُّ عَبْدٍ عَلَى مَا مَاتَ عَلَيْهِ And the commentators stipulate here belief, according to your itiqad. In this other hadith, In the other hadith, it specifies a'mal, and this is what the tarjima, this is what uh, Imam Mundari, <coughs> in his mukhtasar, in his, his summary of Sahih Muslim, one of the great imams of Ahlul Sunnah, that he said, he entitled this Bab al-Ba'th al al-A'mal, the chapter of being resurrected uh, upon your deeds. And then he, uh, that's the uh, title or the chapter heading of this hadith, letting us know that this hadith is showing us, this is about Yom al Qiyamah, you'll be raised, resurrected according to your deeds. So here you're gonna be resurrected in accordance with your belief and your deeds. All of this, all everything we do and believe and propagated in this life, Yom al Qiyamah is gonna come out and we're gonna be held to account. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, Narrated that the, prophet, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said on the day of resurrection, the people will be gathered barefooted, naked, and uncircumcised. I said, I asked, O Messenger of Allah, will the men and the women look at each other? He said, the situation will be too hard for them to pay attention to that. Ruah Bukhari wa Muslim. Look at that. Now, we can't even imagine. It's very difficult now in this time in our life with all the ease, with all the things. And to to not notice nakedness, to not notice uh, differences. In some environments, because the restrictions in the environments, that something as simple as an ankle can throw a man off. But here the people will be resurrected naked on the Yom al Qiyamah and they won't even pay attention. It will, the environment, will, there will be so much fear and everybody will be so concerned about themselves, his or herself, the fear 
that they, they won't even uh, pay attention to that. That won't mean anything to them because they'll be concerned about their soul. They'll be concerned about, they won't even notice these things. These things that drive us in this life will be totally nothing to us in the hereafter because we'll be so scared. And that's what you find. Look at the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That even in the dunya, when you are busy with crises in your life, you know, trials, tribulations, difficult, you're dealing with death. You don't, those uh, many other things in life become trivial, becomes nothing. The stress at work goes away when you're dealing with death in the family. When you're dealing with death in the family or si major sickness, life-threatening sickness, you're not thinking about uh, getting with the opposite sex or, or this and that and the other or having a girlfriend or a boyfriend. You're thinking about yourself. You're thinking about your health. You're thinking about living another second. You hopefully are thinking even about Toba. Coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the nature of human being, beings. Wallah misa'an, may Allah protect us and preserve us. There are so many things uh, that will happen on Yom Al-Qiyamah in another hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And these all come from, this is uh, atiqad, this is uh, coming from the book in the sunnah. Here's from the sunnah. Uh, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the people will be gathered in three manners or ways, desirous, fearful, two riding one camel, three on one camel, four on one camel, ten on one camel, and the rest will be summoned in the fire. It accompanies them whenever they spent the night and stops wherever they stop and keeps their company in the morning and in the evening. In another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu said, and this is in accordance, uh, this is according to the narration of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala who narrated a, a man said, O Messenger of Allah, how will a kafir be gathered on his face? So he was asking about uh, the Quran and, 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 and how, how, how will a disbeliever, how will, they be, how will they be resurrected on their face, gathered on their face and driven on their face? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, is not he who made him walk with his legs in this world able to make him walk on his face on the day of judgment, on the day of resurrection? Qatada sub-narrator said, yes, he can by the power of our Rabb, our Lord, letting us know Yom al is going to be severe for the disbelievers and that all these things are possible. This is all Alm al -ghaib. It's not according to our logic, as I said. It's according to the Nusus. And we believe the Nusus. That's what Iman is. Sulaim ibn Amr reported that al Mikdad ibn Aswa radiallahu ta'ala said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, the sun will come close to the people on the day of resurrection, about the distance of one mile only. Sulaim ibn Amr said, by Allah, I do not know if he meant by mile, a distance of land, or the instrument used for eye lining. He said, people will suffer sweat according to their deeds. Some will be drowned in it up to their ankle, some others up to their knees. Yet some will be covered by sweat up to their throat. And others will be caught by the mouth. He said, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam appointed at the mouth by his hand. So, alhamdulillah, this shows the severity of that day and that these ahadith we mention are part of our itaqad. And this is why Imam al Musadi put this in his treatise on itaqad, that this is the creed of Ahl Sunnati wa Jama'ah. And this is coming from the Quran and the Sunnah, not from the logic, not from guessing, not from reasoning but it's coming from the Nasus first and foremost. And then the ulama use the means uh, of reasoning and other things to understand these Nasus in accordance with the book and the Sunnah, in accordance with what was narrated by the narrators, the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in tabi'in wa tabi'in tabi'in. So that doesn't mean, it doesn't negate that there's any place of logic in Islam. La, that's not what we're saying. But we're saying logic does not precede Nasus. That's the difference in the Minhaj of Ahl Sunnah, that they are starting with the text first and a certain methodology for understanding those texts, that the Dahir, the apparent meaning first and foremost, 
unless there's other evidence to show otherwise. Whereas a lot of ahl kalam, ahl bid'ah, that they begin a lot of times with their logic and with having doubtfulness to affirm creed. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless Yom al Qiyamah to be a, uh, and, and uh, the time in our, gra our graves to be comforted, for us to be comforted in our graves. And may Allah protect us and preserve us and our families and guide us all and bless us all with ikhlas, with the bad, and accept our good deeds and forgive all of our evil deeds. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.